Hey there, homeowners. Welcome back to our Steps in Buying a Home series. Today, we're unpacking everything you need to know for picking your mortgage lender and the right services for you. If you're a first-time home buyer or a seasoned investor, picking the right lender and loan officer can make all the difference in your journey. Let's dive right in. Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to Living in Spokane, Washington, your go-to channel for everything about the Spokane lifestyle. I'm Hunter McKay, your local guide. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you're up to speed every time we release a new video. No matter if you've been living in Spokane for ages or just considering a quick move to our beautiful city, we'd love to share all of our insider knowledge with you, and we think that our channel is going to be your ultimate resource guide. In fact, we'd love to hop on a call with you and share more about our hidden gems in Spokane. Whether you're ready to dive right in or just considering Spokane as an option, we want to make sure that you have everything you need on this channel to fully embrace the Spokane lifestyle. So let's kick back, relax, and dive right into picking your mortgage broker. All right, so let's start by understanding what are our options? There's three main ones, banks, credit unions, and mortgage brokers. Each one of them have their own benefits and drawbacks, and it's important to know and understand each one before choosing. The first one I want to talk about, banks, the traditional powerhouse of the mortgage industry. Everyone thinks, I need to get a loan, I should go to my bank. And for the most part, this makes sense. They're going to have a lot of different loan options available, and if you already bank with them, they might treat you really well. However, there are some drawbacks to working with a big bank. Traditionally, it's pretty boxy. They're lending their own money, and so kind of what you get is what you're offered, and you can't go outside of their specifications. It's really important to understand that a bank also has many different departments, and so while there's mortgage brokers and tellers inside the same department, it can be really challenging to get everyone to work together in the ways that you really need to. Everyone really loves working with a bank when they are in private banking, and so if you're with Chase, Wells Fargo, US Bank, or any of the big banks and you're in private banking, it can be really beneficial. But if you're a normal traditional banker, then unfortunately I would say that usually you're going to be better off going to a credit union or a mortgage broker, and we'll explain why. Credit unions can be everyone's favorite to go to because they're used to getting a really hands-on experience based on all of their other banking needs. And I have to say that if you're going in for a teller experience or getting a loan on something with wheels or maybe something that goes in the water, a credit union can be a phenomenal experience. They have a lot of customer support and support staff in the background that makes the whole experience really easy and straightforward. The downside to a credit union on the mortgage side is that they almost always have extra rules, even above and beyond a traditional bank. The reason that this is, is because a credit union is owned by its members, and so they have an added fiduciary duty to protect your money. And in order to prove that they've done that on the teller and condition side on the banking, they need to make it more difficult to lend out the credit union's money on the mortgage side. So if you're an average person going to STCU or a, a firefighter credit union, you might think, well, I've always had really great experiences with them. They've treated me really well. Unfortunately, in this circumstance, they have to treat you more strictly because they're lending out partially your money in order to make sure that you're going to pay it back. They need to have really stringent rules. Otherwise, the board might not appreciate what they've done. The third option, and my personal favorite, the middleman, the mortgage brokers. Now, at first you might say, well, Hunter, if he's the middleman, how can he have the cheapest money available? Quite simply put, it's his job to have the cheapest money available and the best products. A broker can reach out to many different lending institutions and have different relationships with different arms. That way they can figure out what is the best lending institution to take you to. If you get declined at one product, they can spin you over to a new lending institution and a new product. And so in many situations, they'll have more options and more options typically means less fees. One of the biggest factors to consider when choosing a mortgage broker, a credit union, or a bank is their interest rate and the different fees that they might charge. If you want more information, we've filmed a different video that'll be linked in the description that gives you all of the information around interest rates and hidden fees and closing costs. 
As you're comparing rates and fees, make sure that each lender gives you a loan estimate and take the time to get with your real estate broker to make sure that you're really comparing apples to apples. There are so many different ways to hide different costs inside of a loan estimate that you really want to make sure you're understanding what each line item means and what it compares to. Another big thing to consider isn't just cost, but the actual loan options and program types available. This is one way where a credit union might be able to shine, because in certain circumstances, they can do what's called a portfolio loan. And a portfolio loan is held by the credit union themselves. Certain banks and mortgage brokers can do these, but it requires that they hold the line in-house, and that means that they won't ever sell the loan. This can be really special because different rules can be led to apply, and you as the borrower can get a special circumstance approved. Now, these can be difficult to get approved, but when you need it, sometimes that flexibility can be really important. Mortgage brokers traditionally won't be able to do portfolio loans, but they will have access to the other five standard loan types that most borrowers are going to use. If you want to dive into those loan types, we have a video linked in the description as well. Now that we have a better understanding of your options, let's explore key factors to consider when choosing a lender. Before we move forward, I want to remind everyone how important it is to get pre-approved. This whole video is about the importance of finding a loan product and a lender that will be loyal and work well for you. So now go do the research, go find one and go complete their application. Because as soon as that's done, I can start hounding them for your pre-approval letter and we can start shopping. How exciting. Those of you who don't know what pre-approval is, it's the very short process where the lender reviews all of your documentation, your credit worthiness, and your overall asset and debt load. That way we can find out what you can afford for a mortgage. For those of you who haven't seen it, we've just recently filmed and posted a video that dives into all of the nitty gritty about pre-approval. Don't forget to watch it. Okay, Hunter, this is a lot of really great information, but how do I find a lender that I really know that I like and wants to work with me? You guys have come to the right place. Ask your real estate broker for recommendations. It's really important to take a few days and interview a handful of different lenders. Talk to them about what their options are. See how their communication style is. Ask them about the teams they work with and what process they follow in order to get you pre-approved. But more than anything, make sure that your lender and real estate broker can work together. And if you've already found one that you like, Ask them to help you find the other. They probably have a handful of recommendations they can make for you. And guys, don't forget to read the reviews online. I know it might be easy to come home and say, look, I found an, a lender out of Florida. They're going to give me a 4.5% interest rate, and it's all going to be so fantastic. I already have my pre-approval letter in hand. Except then you go and read the reviews and realize that it's a two-star broker who has traded firms every three years and not a single person has ever been a repeat customer. There's a reason that we need to take the time and do our homework. Read the reviews. Look for people online. See what people have said about them. Because if someone's bad at their job, trust me, someone's ready to let you know. The final piece to consider, and honestly I think the most important, is the customer service and level of support that you can experience through the escrow process. It is so important to know that most emergencies don't happen during banking hours. And so if your lender is only available Monday through Friday, nine to five, that's a surefire way for something to go wrong during your escrow. One of the biggest things to ask any lender, regardless of where they work, is can I have your cell phone and will you be available to me after five and on weekends? If they won't give you your cell phone and they're not available after five and on weekends, I just promise you something is going to go wrong and you're going to regret that choice. <laughs> just remember when picking a lender, it's not just what products they have available. It's how loyal and how dedicated are they going to be to you. Congratulations, you've unlocked all the secrets you need to find a good lender on your home buying journey. Remember, it's not just about the interest rate. It's about taking the time and doing the research to find a lender and a loan program that's really going to work for you. Make sure that their loyalty and their time frames are aligned with you as well. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. We'd love to hear from you in the comments with any questions you might have as well. Finding the right lender is a significant step in your home buying journey. Choose wisely. See you guys next time.